uh, I really want to thank you to be here today. I know it's not the best room because there are a lot of noise and there are very good talks at the same time as this one. So thank you very much for choosing to be here and I hope, I hope you can learn something very nice today. My name is Marcos. Uh, I work in a company called Mirego and we will be talking about animations today. So a little bit about me. Uh, I'm Brazilian, but I live in Montreal. It has been almost three years. And I work in a company called Mirego. It's a very nice company. Uh, and uh, we also do Droidcom Montreal. So if you want to live the same thing that you're living here next year, but earlier, you can just go to Droidcom Montreal. We announced the dates. It's 19, 20, May. And the website is going to be up soon. And we may have some discount codes for the Droidcom New York attendees. So keep an eye on that. So a little bit of an outline of what we're going to talk about. So we're going to talk about the evolution of mobile apps. Then we're going to see a little bit of UX complexities. We're going to talk about meaningful animations. A little bit of a history that I like to call a tale of back buttons. And then we're going to talk a bit, little bit about mature life out of Lollipop and Marshmallow. But first, I want to, tell, I want to talk to you and tell you a little bit of a story that I have in my life. So beware, it's a TED Talk time. Me, I'm an engineer, developer, programmer, whatever you like to call it. And like I said before, I'm from Brazil, so I used to live in Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo is an amazing city. It's great. I lived there for two years, and you can do anything. Sao Paulo is like New York of Brazil, so it's amazing. I lived there for two years, and there are literally people everywhere. And I used to take the metro every day to go to work. And I swear to you, it was like two to three hours travel to go, and then two to three hours travel to go back from work. It was like a hell. And literally, it's like this every day. And we even have people to push you inside the metro and close the door. So it's, it's like crazy. And because it's a long, long uh, time to go to your work, you want to do something while you're doing it. So your best friend is your smartphone. People won't stop using their smartphone because it's too crowded. And mainly because the metro lines in Sao Paulo, they have, uh, they have good signal, they have good 3G signal. So what they're going to do, they're going to read something, they're going to take a look at the news, at their emails, and all those stuff. And it's very hard to use the smartphone when you're like this in the metro, you, and you can't move, you know? So because of that, I started to pay more attention to applications. And I started to, to stop using applications that I usually really loved, but their user experience was not good enough. Like, it was too hard to do some stuff, you know? Like I said, you're like, you can't move, and you want to see your news. If your application doesn't have a good UX or user experience, you will just give up using it, and you're going to use something else because it has a better experience. And those things started to come to my mind while I was a developer and doing applications and working. I was like thinking, can I use this application while I am going to ho I'm going home? Can I use it? Is it easy enough to use it? So that's how I became, I fell in love by user experience, even though I'm an engineer. So that's the story. That's all time. It's over. We can continue. So the evolution of mobile apps. At the beginning of our times, one day, mobile applications were very simple to use. They didn't do much things. They were nice. We used to check Twitter, Facebook, and do some stuff. But it started to become very complex. Like today, like applications like Evernote, that at the beginning was we used to use just to make some notes here and there, it started to do a lot of more stuff. And, and, and it got very complex. So w what do we do? How can we use such a small screen to do so many complicated stuff? Some, some design patterns started to come, like navigation drawer, tabs, and all those stuff. But people were starting to using it just because they thought it was nice. They didn't use it because they thought it was the best thing to do. 
So a lot of bad practices were happening and the applications were getting worse and worse. We, we had like a lot of talks, like a lot of websites and talks and conferences talking about design patterns and, and, how, and how you should really use them. But actually there is one thing that I think it's, can help you even more than design patterns, and that's animations. That's, that's what inspired me to do this talk. So nowadays, coding an app, it's not that hard today. We have support library, we have design library now, which is amazing. So we have so many things so we can put up an application so fast that the real problem now is how can we put everything that we want in a, such a small screen? in such a limited space. That's the real challenge. Then Google came with material design, libraries, cards, new stuff, adaptive layout, something that can adapt and get better. Focus on design, but there is one thing that I think that people don't get very much attention to it, and that thing is motion. Motion matters, and it's very important. Things like where do, where, do, where do things go, what you can do, where the focus should be. Those things, you need to answer those questions. And you need to do it with animation. If your animation is not answered in at least one of those questions, your animation is not, it's not having any objective. So that's those four questions is what I ask myself every time I start doing animation or every time I, I, I think about the UX of an application. Like for example, where things come from. When I transition to a screen to the other, what happens to my elements? Like, or when I click a button, why my button it's appearing my, my e and it brings a pop-up menu? Why is it coming from another place? Why it's not coming from where I just touched? Where should I focus? Hot out tonight, use a very nice animation to get attention of its user. When you get to the app, it has a very nice animation on the corner to show you that this hotel has nice rates. The rates dropped today. So it's, a, it's the first thing you see once the, everything loads because the animation is there to, like, to gain your attention. So you will know like, oh, there is a difference now. This is less expensive. That's, Maybe the first thing I can check. Let's see again. And it drops. So they are using animation to call the attention of the user. Where do things go? Like I said before, if you have something that is going to be in two screens, the same thing, there is no reason why to make them disappear or teletransport or something like that. Just make them transition from where they were to what they're going to be. Like, for example, play movies. When you select a movie from your library, it just put it where it's going to be after, and then transition is back. So there is no teletransportation, there is no blinking, it just makes sense. And one of the things that I like the most is, what can I do? I really, this is one of the things that I really like. It's Animation that tells you what you should do without you having to explain or anything. Like on Android Wear, you have such a small, such a small screen. You don't, you can't afford to have two buttons to answer and decline your call. So what Google does is they use animations to show you that you can swipe to accept or decline the call. So it shows you that there is something green coming from the left and something red coming to the right. So maybe if I swipe, something is going to happen. And I know that red is a bad thing, and I know that green is a good thing. So at the end, I, I end up knowing that I can swipe to answer and decline without the application having to explain that to me, without the application having any, any tutorials or anything. So that's something that you should really think about before creating those tutorial screens. Uh, inbox. Another thing Inbox does, for example, is when you select your email and you click on the, on the V in the top, the, your email is light to the right. So when you see that, what do you think? You think like, oh, if when I click the button, things go to the right, that means I can also swipe 
to make to mark down my emails. So I'm teaching my users a feature by using animations. Google Maps. When you click in the bottom, it slides up. So just like your doorknob, when you go home, it's a little bit ridiculous like, a, like example, but when you go home and you, you turn your doorknob to open your door, you know that when you put it back to the, where it was before, it's going to close. It's the same thing. See, the thing on the bottom is lighting up. I may assume that it's going to slide down again after. So I know that I can slide up and I can slide down, but the same way I can click on it and, and it's just going to appear. So the animation is teaching me other ways to, to, to work with the application. And you can see that everywhere. If you see Tinder, for example, you can click on, on love or hate or I don't know, and it's going to have an animation to the right or to the left. That means you can also swipe. So when you have a full, a full application, a full example where things go to their place, where, where things just transition, people pay more attention to your application and they know better what they can do. They know better where to go and, and they know better what's the real objective of your application. And your user experience, even though you can do one million things in the screen, your user experience gets better. So animations should rule everything. The use, the use of animations can help simplify your app and eliminate, eliminate unnecessary tutorials or even buttons. There is nothing I hate the most than opening an app and having to go through a 10 screens of tutorials. Sometimes you don't really need it. Maybe just when you scroll up, you are in a list. When you're scrolling down, if you automatically scroll up a, sec a, scroll a section to the left, that thing tells me that that section is also scrollable to horizontal. So you, you don't need to, to check that to the, your user. Just use animation. We just have to answer simple questions. Where things come from? Where do they go? What can I do? If you answer one of those questions, your animation makes sense and it's good. It's, it is where it should be. So it's, it's it's something very important. It's something that you should always ask yourself before doing an animation. And of course, it has to, it has to be authentic. It has to make sense. We also saw that we all already saw that somewhere or in the material designs and uh, guidelines, but it's very important to think about it because it's, it, there is nothing worse than having animations just to have animations. You cannot, it's yeah, it's nice to delight and everything, but if you do delighting animations everywhere all the time, your application is going to be very weird. So they should make sense. They need to have a reason to exist. Because if they don't have a need, if they don't have a reason to exist, what's gonna happen? This is what's gonna happen. You're gonna have a 1994 PowerPoint application where you're going to have thousands of animations and stars and, and, and things going, I don't know. Yeah, look how beautiful it is. I have animations, right? I have things going to the plays. I have things animating and, and all the stuff. Look how awesome it is. But it's ugly, right? And, and it's too much animation. It's like, why? So if you don't ask your questions, if you don't ask why am I doing this animation, what is it going to do, if you don't do that, that's what you're going to have, and, and trust me, you don't want that. Okay, let's, let's go through this because it's too sad. So Lollipop was introduced, Matthias Duarte was there and talking about nice stuff and animations and UI and design and UX and everything, it was great. But I, I know, I ask myself this, and you also ask yourselves, how do we do that? How, how, how can we do all those nice things that they're showing us? So, so Lollipop introduced activity, transitions, review, thought, feedback, so we can make our applications better. The use of meaningful transitions to tell you this is what's happening. Again, the inbox app. When you open an email, what happens? The email just opens. It really, literally opens. Like when, you, when I open my email, which said that I didn't get the ticket for Google I.O., for example, it was a sad moment, but the animation was there and it made sense, so it was okay. 
I guess. <laughs> so how do we do those stuff? How do we do those animations, those transitions, for example? It's very simple, actually. It, it, it may look complicated, but it isn't. You just have to tell your application, I want these features. I want the content transition. And then you say, what's the exit transition that you want? Do you want an explode? Do you want a fade? Do you want a scale? And automatically, Android is going to pick up every view of your, of your layout and is going to call this animation. You have explode, you have slide, you have fade, like I said. So, for example, if you take the, the Google Play uh, movies animation, if you want to do that, it's simple. You could just create activity options, you pass your movie, your movie image, and you give a tag to it, you give a name to it, like image, for example, and you say start activity, passing the intent, and passing those options. And um, I did this application, actually, it's on my GitHub, it's very simple, and uh, I'm going to show the code very, very soon, you guys will see with more detail. After that, you can play with it with a lot of things, like you can add a listener in the next, in the next activity, you can add a listener for the transition. And you can say, like, at the end, I want out the cover image to fade. I want the detail text to scale or to move from down to from bottom to up and and and, and fade. You know, so it's 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 not complicated. Now, there is one thing that I like very much, and that's what I call the tale of back buttons, and it's a game. I'm going to show you three cases, three stories, and I want you to think about it and answer yourself. I'm going to ask you some questions, and I want you to answer to yourself in your head. And after that, we're going to anal analyze those stuff, and, and we will kind of feel how animations can make life easier. So that's it. I call it a, a tale of back buttons. So what happens when you click back in each of those screens? I have Play Music, I have Facebook, and I have YouTube. That's my state. What happens? Let's see. We'll see once at a time. So, Facebook. What's going to happen? I'm on my timeline. I type DroidCon in the search view, and I press search. Then, I type NDevCom in the search view, and then I press the back button. What happens? Will I be back? Will my search going to be canceled? Or will I be back to the timeline? That's the question. So I'll give you five seconds. Answer yourself, and we're going to see what happens. OK, it's done. So let's see. I look for DroidCon. Then. I look to, for NDevCon. But I, I gave up. Like, I, I, you know what? NDevCon is not cool, so I'm just going to do back. Yeah, I had some problems typing. So I clicked back, and what happened? I didn't go back to my DroidCon search. I already had a DroidCon search, right, before. Why I didn't go back to my DroidCon search? I got back to the timeline. That's what happened. Were you, did anybody guess? Like, everybody had the same answer? I, I believe not. So this is a problem, because you should know what's going to happen. The second one, second case. It's Facebook again. Now I'm on uh, someone's profile, right? That's where I am. I press the search button. I look for DroidCon. Then I do my search. Then I do the same thing. I type NDevCon. I do my search. Then I press the back button. Will I be back to DroidCon results screen, or will I be back to the person's profile? That's the question. We'll see. So let's see. I look for DroidCon. I hope this time it will be faster. Great. Now I'm going to look for NDevCon. Great. 
Great, now it's back. I didn't go back to DreadCon results, and I didn't go back to my profile. So why it didn't do the same thing as before? Your app needs to be consistent. So none of them happened. Last case, I swear, I, I promise, it's the last one. YouTube. I, you're in the home screen, you type the killers and the search view, and you press search. Then you type Coldplay in the search view, but then you decide, you know what, Coldplay is not cool anymore, and you just do back. Will my search get canceled, or will I be back to YouTube's home? To do, 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 you'll see. The killers. Then I click on the search again. I look for Coldplay, but I don't do search. I don't press the button to search. I just press back, and my search is canceled. So I had three situations, and on my three situations, I had three ex different uh, results, different things, three different comp compartment. This, and what's important to know is that this isn't right or wrong. It's just bad guidance. There is no problem of when I press back on Facebook, it takes me back to the timeline. It's their choice. There is no problem. Uh, you know, it's, not, it's the same thing as someone preferring strawberries instead of chocolate. It's weird. Chocolate's way better. But it's, it's no problem. We accept it. But at least guide your users. Ch let your users know what's going to happen. And Google Play, they have a nice way to solve this, this solution because they use animation. When you click on the search, it does a review animation to pop up the search view over the toolbar. Because of the animation, it becomes pretty clear that by clicking the back button, the search view will be closed and the search will be canceled. Because there is, like, just like I said before, when you open your doorknob at home, you know that when you put it back up, it's going to close the same way that you were able to open. So when I have an animation to show my search view, I may expect that when I click my back button after this animation, I'm going to have an animation back and this is going to be canceled. So I know what's going to happen. So I have a good guidance. Like you can see. For, so because of the animation, it's pretty clear that if I press the button now, back, it's just going to close with a very nice animation, and, and I, I have a good guy in this on my app. Now I want to show you a demo. I did this very, uh, so, you, so I can show you how, how fast it is to do something like Google Play Movies. So I have this screen, and when I click on it, I go to its detail. It has a nice animation, it has a nice transition. The cover where, that I had before, just check its place on the next screen, and if I do back, it go back to where it was before. So it, how did I do this? I, honestly, I only have two activities, and this is all the code that I have. I have, on my own create, I, I get my image view, I set a click listener, and I start a new intent. On this intent, I pass the image view, and I pass the options. Check a look. I do an activity options, and and then I do make scene transition animation. I pass my class, the image view, and a tag. This tag is important because this tag that I call main poster, for example, it's what the other activity will use to know what's the link between the image view on the screen and the image view on the next screen. So let's see, let's take a look in the next activity. What I have here is the other activity. I have the two bar. I just set the title to anything because I don't want anything in the title. And look, literally, I, it's it's four lines of code, five lines of code. And I have my image view, and all I do is set transition name. That's important because, like I said, that's how my the framework will know. How, where is the link between the image views and who should become who and how you can go to a place to, to the other. And now I'm going to do something that I promised myself I would never do again in my life, but uh, let, let's try, let's see what happens. I'm going to do a live coding. 
And I'm going to just add something very nice to what I already have. So let's see. It's my Android Studio. I hope this will work. It never works. Can you see? It's not, ah, uh, it's because. What's what's macOS is doing? Yeah? Okay, I know how to fix this. Uh, let's see. Sorry guys. I'm going to put them together. Okay. That should work. Great. So Let's see the first screen, the first class, uh, first activity, it's, it's movie list. So literally, look, this is all I have on my code. It's all I have on my code. I have like the image view, I set on click listener, and I, and I start my activity. You, you all, you guys can read in the back? Perfect. And I, I set the tag, main poster. And then I start the activity. On the next activity, I literally, I set my toolbar defaults that everybody has, and then I get the image view that it's, that it's links, and I set main poster. This way, it knows how to, to relate them and, and how to transition one to the other side. So what I'm going to do now, for example, I'm going to add, I want that at the end of my transition, the name men of skills for example, fades. So how do I do that? It's very simple. I can do get window, get enter transition, and I put add listener. Then I put transition listener, and I have here transition end. Of course, before I have to get my text view. And then here on my transition end, I'm going to tell, I'm going to say like, okay, uh, actually let's do something that is going to be more visible. I'm going to change this color. So from set text color, I'm going to put like color point uh, yellow. Okay. So now what's going to happen is at the beginning of the transition, it's going to be white. And when the transition finishes, when it gets to the small place where it's going to be, the color is going to change. So let's start this. Where's my visor? It's here. Please work. Please work. Oh gosh, you cannot see this. Okay. Okay, now I have my of two. When I click on it, I'm going to expect that the, the title is going to change its call at the end of the transition. And it changed. You guys were able to see that? I don't know if you guys saw that. Did you say it? Okay, cool. So that's, it was very simple, right? I just added a transition listener and I changed the color at the end. I can, I can make things go from bottom to up. I can fade stuff. I can, I can do whatever I want. So literally there is no excuse anymore to not use those stuff. It's just too simple. I'll show again. You can, you can see how it changes. Click again. And then you can see that the from white, it becomes yellow. 
So this code of this application is on my GitHub. And you, I'm going to tweet it after. So you can download it, and you can play with it, and you can take a look what, however you want. So let's go back to this. So question. Is motion design only possible on Lollipop? And I have to tell you, or Israel can tell you too, no. It's not, it's not available only on, on a lollipop or marshmallow. You can use that before too, because motion design, material design, is just a concept. It's, it's not a technology, it's not an API, it's a concept. It was always there. Path had the float action button before Google calling it floating action button. Instagram had the back button on the top the way we have the back button today, before Google saying that this new back button would be the back button of material design. So material design was always there, always. The only thing was that it wasn't like called material design. So no, you don't need lollipop or marshmallow to do great animations or to guide your users to have a better user experience. For example, let's take a look at a very simple example. Spotify has a very bad transition between player and the playlist. When I click on the X, the X, it's just like trans... It's not repeating the animation? Okay. So. Where's my animation? Okay, it's there. So look, when I click down in the player, what happens? becomes black, and then suddenly I'm in the player. Like, we're in 2020 and we have tra teletransportation. Like, it makes no sense. So if that thing is in, on the bottom, if I click on it, oh, why it doesn't slide up? I could just do it. Why not? And when I click on the X, same thing. It just disappears. This is a very bad example. And honestly, this has nothing to do with lollipop or, or marshmallow. If you take, for example, Google Play Music, if you take Google Play Music on your gingerbread phone, when you click in the bottom, when you click in the player, what's going to happen? It's going to slide up. And you, because it's slide up when you click on it, you know you can, sw you can just swipe. You know you can just drag. And you can drag down too, again, after. And this, this is not... This is not transition animation. This is not activity transition. This is simply animation that you can do with the animation framework on 2.3, 2.4, 2.3, 3.0, 4.1, you know? And another thing, you guys, I authorize you guys, you can use minimal SDK 4.1, 4.1. Please, you're going to be happy after, and you will have less problems, and, and life will make more sense. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I say that no, motion design, motion, uh, better user experience with animation, it's not available only on Lollipop and Marshmallow. Yeah, I just said that. So just a wrap up of what we saw today. Material design is a concept. It's not a technology. It's not an API. It's not an SDK. No, it's a concept. It takes idea and I apply little by little where it's possible and where it can be done. You don't need material design. You don't need lollipop to do material design. You just have to use your animation or your imagination. Think about it. How can I use the, the, the framework that I have to do today to do those animations? Even the activity transition is possible. You just have to play with, with some activity, transparent activity and all those stuff, and, and you can play with it, so you can do the same animation before Lollipop and before Marshmallow. Use animation to guide your users. For me, this is the, the most important lesson, because I hate, I really hate tutorial screens. So use, use animations to guide it, just like Google did for Android Wear. When you're going to create your first Android Wear, this is very important. This is going to be very, very important for you to think. How am I going to put functionalities on such a small screen? And same thing for Google Play Music and the Spotify example that I just did. And I can't see. Get inspired by other apps, but don't do a copy-paste stack overflow design patterns. It's not because Facebook uses navigation drawer that I'm going to use navigation drawer. It's not because 
Google Play has a nice animation on the search that I need to do the same thing. You can, but you don't have to. You can create your own way to show search. You, you just work it how you think it is. Use your imagination. Think what, don't think what would be the coolest. Think what would make more sense. And even better, be an inspiration. Create something that you think that it's going to inspire others. This is very passionate. Like, it's, it's what makes the, my job better every day. Like, it makes me happy to go with my work. It's try to be an inspiration on animations, or on design, on, and all those stuff, because that's what delight users. That will make them think this, this, this application is awesome. Thank you, that's it. I think uh, we have 10 minutes, I think. So if you have questions, I will be happy to answer. Yes? No? I have two minutes. I can answer two questions. Anyone? Questions? Yes? So, what do I suggest for for an application that heavily use fragments? So, if you're thinking about Lollipop and and Marshmallow, the same transition animation, activity transition animation, is available for fragments. So you can also use fragments for it. And if I can say something else, think to think twice before using fragments. But they're useful. They're nice. Don't hate them. But just think twice. Uh, the question? Question? No? So I'll, I'll be around after. If you, if you want to ask me something, uh, I will be posting the slides and my GitHub soon on Twitter. So you just have to check it out if you want to know more. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs>